Welcome, saints, to the Bible Countdown. Today, we're going to go into Revelations and John 21 and Numbers 13. And we're going to look at the timeline that Yahushua HaMashiach, our Lord and Savior, Yahuwah, the Father of the All, has put in the Bible. Woo! Shabbat Shalom, saints, and seriously this time, my name is Messenger Paula, and welcome back to Wakefulness Theology. Today, we are talking about how to get on the ark, and we're doing the Bible countdown. Yeah. All right, so uh, let's, let's get started. So just to remind you guys, um, we've been doing, we've been working on this list for, I don't know, a month or two months. I don't, I don't know when I started the new playlist. And so now we are starting the second part, which is the word number two, the sword. And this comes from a dream I had where Machizodek is giving us this, this. So um, we're on part two, let's go. The word. I need to prepare you guys for the information that's coming. I need to set it up, okay? Before we get into the word. So I just want you to understand that Hebrew years change from September to April and it flows, it's inclusive, it's not exclusive. So we're looking at three year spans. And so what this means is that, as I've said in other videos, the there's two Hebrew New Year's, you have the a secular one, the cultural one, and then you have the spiritual one or the religious one. One is in uh, September, October, the other one is in March, April. So when we're looking at prophecy, when it's going year by year, that, that whole from September till April is a transitional time of year. So when I'm saying year by year, it could be, for example, this is 2018, but in prophecy, it could be 2019 already, depending. And so that's why it's going in, in three year spans, because if it's if it says um, 20, 2018, depending on when the thing happens, it could be 2017 or it could be 2019. It depends on where the event is falling. And since I don't know, I can't pinpoint that specifically. I can't say it happens on April 19th, 20, you know, unless God tells me, unless Yah, Yahuwah tells me, well, April 19th. And even if he tells me April 19th, I still don't know specifically what year. So he would have to say April 19th, 2019. You know, and still, I think that could still be fluctuating depending on, you know, are we, which way we're looking at 2019? Are we looking at it coming in? Are we looking at it coming out? You know, so, so I'm just, to make it easier for me, <laughs> we're going to look at this as in three year spans and in Hebrew it flows. Okay. We got it. We are currently living in Revelation 11. Uh, one through three. And not only, I'll, I'll show you guys later the other verses that correspond to Revela Revelation 11, one through three, but for this introductory part, I'm just keeping it simple. So this is where we are right now in time in 2018. I did a video last week and I explained this one and there was given to me a read, a read like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, 
rise and measure the temple and the altar and them that worship within. So I explained that last week saying that we are the temple and right now we are being measured, which means our judge, our hearts are being judged. Okay, so what this means is that, and I've explained this already in other videos, if you are being called to do something or if you are being given uh, something to do for the kingdom, if inside of you, you feel like a kind of clawing, the Holy Spirit pushing you to do something, you need to do that right now. You need to be obedient because this is your test. Okay, if you don't do what you're being given to do, if you aren't obedient to that voice, that push that's telling you to do uh, Yahuwah's work here on earth right now, then mm, it's not a good look, kid. So you need to work that out. But that's where we are right now. So um, the second verse, but the court, which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and forty-two months. So this verse right here is being fulfilled right now as we're talking. This is more about what's going on inside of us as Yahushua is testing us and judging our hearts. The church, huh? Not, not, not the secular world, not the evil ones, us that's here. This one is what's going on around us outside. The holy city is about to be tread upon underfoot by the Gentiles for 40 and two months. This is happening outside of us and I will show you that later. And I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. And I've talked about that before and um I, I've told you guys in other videos that this is where we're going into next year for 2019. Okay, so all of this is where we are. If you want more information about the sackcloth, I have the whole the video is called How to Get on the Ark, Wear Your Sackcloth. And believe me, I did notice that it had the least views possible. So what that tells me, let me show you guys. You think I'm joking. It's my channel information. So Right here, you can see uh, 226, 240, 325. So the one that is the shortest video, it got the most views. 179, this is the wear your sackcloth video, and then 273, 200, 233. So in general, I'm getting between 200 and 300 views. 200, 300 views, you can see, you can look down. As far as it goes, 200, 300 views. But for some strange, weird reason, this one that's called Wear Your Sackcloth only got 179 views. It's the lowest viewed video probably in the past couple of years. So why is that, Saints? Why is it? it uh, you know, it's like people are willing to get the good news. You know, Yahushua is coming back. Yay, let's hear about that. Um, you know all of the good news they're willing to hear but the the news that you have to do some work to the news that you have uh, a end you have a, a part in this covenant you have a job to do you don't want to hear about that you don't want to hear about the the narrow road that we have to go on that's not right that is not right so i pray that if you haven't seen if you've been watching my videos and you've seen every video but that one <laughs> I pray that you go back and see that one because that's the one you need to see. All right. And this is where we're going into in 2019, whether you know it or not, whether you're ready or not, whether you want to do it or not, that's what's about to happen. So I pray that you see that video. Okay. So I need to be very diplomatic about this and, and make some things clear before we go forward. I did a video not long ago and I was talking about how to get past deceptuals. And the septuals are the seven gatekeepers, all of the concepts that end with AL, like um, economical, political, spiritual, or religious. You know, all of the ALs. And we went through that, if you guys remember. And at the end of the video, I was saying that you know that you've gotten past the seven gatekeepers. You know that you're free from the septuals. If you can honestly say, I am a son of Yahushua HaMashiach. That is your identity. And we talked about that it's the same whether you're a girl or a man or a woman. It's not about your sex. It's about spiritual maturity and the word masculinity. 
represents spiritual maturity, whereas femininity represents the manifested material world. And I've explained that in past videos. I can't go and repeat myself every time. The videos would just be seven hours long. So please go back and, and look at those videos. But when you can look, you know, yourself in the eye or whoever in the eye and say, I am a son of Yahushua HaMashiach, and that is your identity, not, not anything else, then you know you've gotten past those sexuals. As far as color, your skin color, or your, your nationality, or, or whatever, your, your nationality, once you are saved and born again, you belong to true spiritual Israel. You belong to that tree. So here, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, once you're born again, and you, you, your identity is now as a son of Yahushua HaMashiach, then you belong to this tree right here, this olive tree. And that is natural born people with Hebrew blood and the Gentiles who were grafted in and we become true spiritual Israel. So once you, your identity is a son of Yahushua HaMashiach, then your, your, then your ethnicity becomes Hebrew because you are part of the tree of true spiritual Israel. Do you understand what I mean? So you are Hebrew either by blood or be, by being grafted in and your race is the human race. If you're watching this video, there is no black, there is no white, there is no African, there is no American if you are born again. Once you claim that title, once you say, I'm a white American, then you are claiming that as your identity. You got a choice. So all of those claiming to be true spiritual Israel, sons of Yahushua HaMashiach, I need you to hear my words and not your programming. All right, this is very important. I was raised as a black American woman. And in that raise, in that um, education I received, I was taught that uh, Jesus was white. I was taught that Jewish people live in Israel, in the Jewish state that was created by the United Nations after World War II. Okay, this was my reality. And my whole life, I supported that. That, that was fine with me. I never, I mean, other people have. But me personally, I said, well, in the Bible, if it says that uh, the Jewish people are his chosen people, and if I'm a Gentile, I mean, hey, I, I didn't have any problem with that. I said, all right, well, let's support Israel. I'm talking about when I was growing up. I didn't really give it too much thought. And about Jesus being white, I, I, I love Jesus if he was white. I love Jesus if he's black. I love Jesus if he's Chinese. I love Jesus if he appeared as a tree. I love, it does not matter. I love him when his name, if you called him Jesus. I loved him if you called him Yahushua. I love him if you call him Yeshua. I love him if you call him the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You know, it, it's, it's your heart. It's my heart. I'm just talking about me. I love my creator, my Lord, and my Savior, Yahushua HaMashiach. So when the tables were turned... I didn't have a problem with that. Now, it, I, I'm not saying it doesn't. It affects the world. It affects many things, whether you think of Yahushua as black or white or whatever. It, it does change many things. But me personally, I never had any issue with what other people said was true when I was growing up. So now I am an adult and I am. I have become... Uh, spiritually mature, not to say that I won't become more mature, but um, compared to the past, I am the most <laughs> mature than I, that I've ever been in my life. Let's put it that way. And now I'm coming to understand that perhaps we have been lied to about this the same way that we've been lied to about the other things. And it is highly, highly possible that the people in the Bible and the land in the Bible are not the people in the land that we know today as Jerusalem and the, the Jews, okay? Um, I'm not talking about spirit, true spiritual Israel. I'm talking about genetic, uh, historical stories from the Bible is what I'm talking about. It is possible 
that the Holy Land that they're talking about as Jerusalem in the Bible is actually located in South Africa. I can't talk about it today in this video in depth because it's way too big. That's going to take like, I don't know how many videos to go through that process. But what I'm saying to you is I'm just opening up the, the, the conversation so that you already have time to look into it yourself and, and just start to consider the possibility that this might be true. It is possible that the holy lands that are talked about in the Bible, as we know, um, referred to as Jerusalem and, and all these other cities, were actually originally located in South Africa, okay? I think quite a few of you already have heard or have considered the possibilities that black Americans are Hebrew. I've talked about that before. Not only black Americans, obviously, because the Israelites, we, we were spread out all over the earth and mixed. And so there's many different cultures that are uh, descendants of Israelite Hebrews. Um, and one of them are black Americans. If you take this into consideration, it really puts a spin on the prophecies that are in the Bible. Everyone is looking to the land in the Middle East um, as confirmation to these prophecies. But if it is true, what I'm saying to you, that perhaps it's actually South Africa that was the land of milk and honey in the Bible. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to argue that and it's too much information for this video. But if you want more information about it, it's right here on YouTube. Uh, true locations of Israel and Jerusalem found, not where you think. This is Truth Unveiled 777. It just came out one month ago. I received this video from uh, Sister Kim. And so here you can see just on the screenshot, this is an ancient map of South Africa. And you can see here that Jerusalem was located there. All of the holy cities that are mentioned in the Bible are on these ancient maps that have been um, hidden and changed. So our, our current maps that we have now are not the same as these ancient maps. So if you like, you, you can look at this video in the meantime. And I will be coming back to talk about this uh, in the future. I just, I think the most important thing that I need you to understand is your reaction. So we also talked about this in uh, Control Your Emotions. So if this information that I'm giving you is causing you anger or fear or stress, you need to check yourself. You need to ask yourself, why? Um, as I said, all of my life and for the whole history of our known civilization, it has been the opposite. And now, perhaps, we're learning that that was a, a lie. I still feel the same way now that I felt before. It does not change anything, but it does make a lot of sense. <laughs> so the reason I'm bringing this up is if it's true, if it's true that the, the Bible, the holy lands that the Bible is talking about is actually in South Africa, and we've been lied to our whole lives, then this prophecy in Revelation 11, 12, sorry, uh, Revelation 11, 2, but the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot 40 and two months. If this is true, what I just said about South Africa, then it's possible that this Restitution of Land Rights Act could be the fulfillment of this right here, Gentiles and the Holy City being tread underfoot. Now this right here, this Restitution of the Land Act, it is just now being renegotiated or reestablished or changed this year. Why land seizure is back in news in South Africa. 
So you know that they were taking away the white farmer's land and bringing, giving it back to the Africans. Now again, I need you to, this ha you, we have to be very careful with this because we as sons of Yahushua HaMashiach, we have to agree. And that we know from that we know from 1 Corinthians 1.10, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. So what I'm asking you guys right now is to be very careful with your emotions and, and your thoughts, and to take into consideration that we are not American, we are not any other race, we are not any other color, but we are sons of Yahushua HaMashiach. We are Hebrew belonging to the, the, the tree, the olive tree, and our race is human race. So keep remembering that if you start to feel afraid or angry, okay? So as I was saying here, this is a very heated topic because a lot of people think that it's racist to take away the farmer's land and give it back to the Africans. I would say be careful with that because the truth is, is that for more than two decades after white minority rule ended in South Africa, most of its profitable farms and estates are still owned by white people and about 95% of the country's wealth is in the hands of 10% of the population. So if you take yourself out of the story and you just read these sentences in black and white on this page here, you know that that is not right. You know that that is not just. That is not justice. That is not justice and you know it is not. So please don't anyone come and talk about this policy being racist. We're talking about these this sentence right here that after decades decades of apartheid and you guys know how horrible apartheid was and we're not talking about Jim Crow in America we're talking about in Africa <laughs> their land and having to, to suffer that injustice which is also in in the Bible actually prophesized in the Bible as well but that's not for today um, and having that that minority to rule for so long and still even after the abolishment of of um, apartheid to still own 95% of the wealth, that is just wrong regardless. It doesn't matter of the color, it doesn't matter of the nation, to have the minority of people own 95% of the wealth in any situation is wrong and unjust. You have to be able to um, agree with that. So they are trying to even out the, the playing field a little bit and Regardless of your opinion of the situation, because I really don't want to get bogged down in political debate, regardless of your personal opinions about the situation, what I'm trying to point out to you is that this, perhaps, this could be the fulfillment of that prophecy. It is because in South Africa, the farm seizure, seizures, the land reform plans have been scrapped but there is now a new bill on the way. South Africa has withdrawn a farm expropriation bill just days after uh, President Donald Trump tweeted he was closely watching the situation, but the bill is said to be replaced by a new act given the government more powers. So Theresa May in the UK, she supports legal land reform. So uh, the ANC said that with the bill, uh, see it said that the bill, which would have the power to take land away from white farmers to rebalance racial disparities, need to have further consideration. The bill has been going through Parliament for the last two years. So were the bill to be reintroduced, it would contain a clause or clauses reflecting expropriation of land without compensation if that is the way the South Africans have chosen to go. The government is trying to change the status quo where the white community who only make up 8% of the populations own 72% of the farms.
So I think we really have to watch this closely <clears throat> and see what happens with this situation in the next three and a half years because this has just started uh, this year in 2018, these new reforms. Yeah, if in three and a half years we see a migration of white farmers from South Africa to America or whatever be the case, uh, the majority of the land is returned or whatever will happen, we will know that th it will be confirmed as fulfillment of Revelation 11, 2. So we, we shall see. We shall see. Believe me, I know that there's been horrific things that have gone on with this situation. And of course, I do not um, condone, you know, killing or torture or maiming or hurting people in any way. And I'm sure I know that, you know, there's been horror stories where white farmers were killed and all of that. And of course, I denounce all of that kind of stuff. That's not what I'm saying at all. Um, I'm just saying the political actions that are going on in South Africa with this land reform that has just come up again this year in 2018 with new reforms. If it takes three and a half years right here, the holy, shall, the whole, the holy city shall they tread up underfoot for 40 and two months. If the white farmers are there for 40 and two months, and in three and a half years, we see something happen with that. That's, this is, has been fulfilled. But we, we shall see what goes on with that. The way that I was shown these Bible timelines is that I was shown the starting point for each chapter. Uh, the train. So let me show you the train and the earthquake. Let me show you because I won't have the, I won't be able to explain that in this video but you can certainly go to my channel and see for yourself. So this one right here, this is my video, uh, the holy letter 73 means earthquakes, Minister Paul and Rhonda Thompson. This is from November 17, 2017. So anyone, you realize it's 17 and 17. And what have we been talking about? Uh, the last video we talked about 1717, didn't we? So that's what this video is, 1717. This is my uh, here's my YouTube channel. You go to the videos, you scroll down, and then 11 months ago, you see 73. So this is where we are. I only got 160 views and no thumbs up, so I think no one understood this video. And it's difficult to explain, but... So in this video, in this video, I, I explained the, the Trump, a little bit about Trump, uh, the voice that I heard in 12 weeks, the bad man comes. And also I explained that Minister Paul, he uploaded a video on November 12th, and that was the day before the Christchurch earthquake on the 13th. And Sister Rhonda uploaded a video on November 21st, and that was the day before the uh, Japan earthquake. So the Holy Letter 73 was confirmed. Still, I'm still on the earthquake. So if you go to my wakefulness, wakefulness theology website, and you go to the blog, and you scroll down to November 15th, this is the link to the video that I just showed you. And in the video, this is what I'm explaining. I've talked about it before. This earthquake happened, 7.3, and I explained that this was representing and showing um, that it was a sign for the two witnesses of Revelation 11.13 because the earthquake happened on 11.13, November 13th. Um, on the border of Iran, Iran and Iraq. So like I said, 2017, again, the guys with the 17. So I can't go into detail about that here, but if you want more information, it's in that video. So that's how I knew about the uh, a Revelation 11 timeline is because of the earthquakes. Um, the train timeline that's because of this video here, New Biblical Hidden Timeline in Numbers 1333, and this is a preview to the next video here on April 5th, 2017, and I explain. Synchronicity I had that I was in the train station, I was listening to True News, um, and it was about cannibalism, and when he said on the radio program, um, Numbers 13, verse... 30 through 33 at that very moment the train was coming 
and the number on the train was 10 30 33 which when you take off the zero is 13 30 and then 33 so I, I explained how crazy that was after I did the video I just thought about it for one second and I said there must be something special about numbers 13 uh, 30 through 33 and sure enough I read it and there is another hidden timeline inside of it just like in the John 21 verse Okay, so that is how I learned about the timeline in Numbers 13. And if you want more information, again, you go to my <clears throat> YouTube and you scroll down. It, it, it starts here. This is so it must be here, part one of the Numbers timeline. And I also have, you know, my playlist. You go to my playlist. And I have a, a playlist called um, the Hidden Bible Timelines Numbers, Hidden... So there, this one is for Numbers, and this one is for John uh, 21. So that's how I knew about the Numbers timeline, is because of the train and True News. Because I was talking about, at that time, I was talking about um, cannibalism. And so that's how I got that message. And you'll see, you can see that in those videos. The earthquakes, that's how I got the message for Revelation 11. And... Trump. So the Trump uh, message that received two menorahs on December 6th, and that was when President Trump declared Jerusalem as the new, the capital of Israel on the same day that I got the two menorahs. So I did a video about that also. So that one happened in this video, 777 and it's a timeline to the end of transition from 2008 and 2013 to 2030 and I talk about 717 in here as well so um, it looks like this it's right here with the 1919 1919 is a big important part so I was starting to put this stuff together and then I had a dream the same night that Trump that was November December 6 the same day that he declared Jerusalem the capital of Israel or said that he will declare that um, I received two menorahs, okay? And at that night, I dreamed over and over four and a half years. Four and a half years. Be I don't want to make this video long, so I will do a series and explain all of this in more depth. So at the moment, just, you know, take it like that. I dreamed four and a half years. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of background information that, that is here. In, in my YouTube channel, and I've documented all of it, okay? And so they're all documented on my YouTube channel. And this, because of these events, that's how I know where the years start for the biblical uh, verses. Also, I know Revelation 5, that came from the I Pet Goat study that we did not long ago. Right here, the escape is the sealed 153 first wave going into eternity 2026, 2033. That is where I understood Revelation 5 timeline inside this video. And it's funny because I just see here that I put 2026 to 2033. Uh, and last week we were talking about 2027 as being the water event. So you see here is just another confirmation that that falls right into place. All right, so the next sticky part that we have to agree on or at least allow each other um, space is that Ruach HaKadosh is the woman of Revelation 12. We are her son, the son, meaning the body of Christ on earth. Okay, Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, is a she. <laughs> All right, and I'm finally going to take a few minutes to break this down because every time I do a video and I say she for the Holy Spirit, I get a, a comment that the Holy Spirit is not she. I'm going to show you why the Holy Spirit is she right now because it's important in what we're going to be talking about in the Bible Countdown. But also, I just want to say that inside Yahushua HaMashiach, we are free. So if you want to say he for the Holy Spirit, say he by all means you are free you can go ahead and do that but i also need to receive the same freedom back from you that i give to you to call her she because she is she <laughs> 
and she has told me that she is she so so let's go over this these are the reasons why I know the Holy Spirit is feminine at least on earth so so let me show you the ancient church said that uh, Rak HaKadosh was feminine the language says it there are manifestations of it, of her being, uh, the Rak HaKadosh being a woman, feminine. Uh, there's scriptures, Bible scriptures, and also the translations which go into the, the language and the scriptures. So some of these overlap. Uh, the ancient church, and all of this you can look up for yourself. All I did was Google ancient church, Holy Spirit, feminine. Not very difficult. Um, so if you look up uh, Wikipedia, it'll tell you the Holy Spirit as feminine early church testimonies, article after article after article about it. But let's just look up Wikipedia, Wikipedia quickly. Gender of the Holy Spirit. In Christian theology, the gender of the Holy Spirit has been the subject of debate. The grammatical gender of the word for spirit and neuter in Greek, and this is the word, and masculine in Latin, this is the word, but Greek also has feminine connotations in biblical philology as the, as the translation of the Hebrew term ruah. So the Holy Spirit is furthermore equated with the grammatic, grammatically feminine wisdom of God by two early church follower, uh, fathers. So in Hebrew, the word for spirit, ruach, is feminine, which is used in the Hebrew Bible as in the word Shekinah, and it's to indicate the presence of God. Also in the Quran and the, in the Syriac language, it's also feminine, meaning spirit. So the word itself, spirit, in Hebrew is, is feminine. So you consider the grammatical gender to have been significant for Syriac Christianity. It seems clear that for the Syrians, the cue from glamour ruah, as a feminine noun was not entirely gratuitous, there was a real meaning in calling the spirit she. So it was actually the Catholic Church who changed it into he. And so all of you guys should know as sons of Yahushua HaMashiach that the Catholic Church is the whore of Babylon. You should know that. So in the uh, Semitic languages, and ancient Syriac, the earliest tradition and translations was referring to the Holy Spirit as feminine. And saints, that is just the way it is. That's how it be. All right. Um, but you can go down and you can do all the research you want to do on it. The Holy Spirit as feminine, the early, early Christian testimonies and their interpretations. So he goes through and he explains that the early Christians, the Jews, spoke of the Holy Spirit as feminine. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So that was talking about the ancient church. And it also was talking about the language. So as far as the manifestations of it in real life, let's look at that. So here, back to my YouTube playlist. I'm sorry I have to go through all this background, but a lot of you guys don't watch my videos. You haven't seen all my, my videos. So there's a lot of information in the videos. And what I have, what we have to do is that I take and I build. You might find a few pieces here, a few pieces here, and a few pieces here. And then you need to put all those pieces together to build the understanding of what I'm going to talk about next. So here in this video again you just scroll down it says four movies showing 37 represents the rescue of the woman the rescue of the woman revelation 12. you can also do a search here and if you just put uh, 37 or you put any of these keywords it should pop up but in this in this in this video i did there was there were four movies that i decoded and they all showed 37 and the woman being rescued that is representing revelation 12 and revelation 12 is ruach hakadesh and the sun in revelation 12 is us it is telling the story of when we appear on earth as as us now we're we're waking up we're coming together and we're becoming the body of christ 
on earth. That's what Revelation 12 is. So you guys know about 37. I've talked about that a bit in the last playlist. Um, so here we know that 37 is one of Yahushua's celestial numbers. Um, we know that 37 is also uh, the part of the first four star numbers. It's also a part of the first four hexagonal numbers. It's also a lot of the the names for Yahushua are divisible by 37. It just goes on and on and on. You can see here on the screen. So um, that is very important. Right here, manifestations of Ruach HaKadosh being represented as a woman in real life. So you know it's not my only my interpretation of text. That is how it is in real life. Guys, over and over, right in front of our faces. And the scriptures, this is in my video, someone else's video, and it, it says a uh, proof, Holy Spirit, proof, female Holy Spirit, a she in the Bible, Hebrew feminine more than grammatical gender. So this video is like seven minutes. Let's look at some of it. And remember last week we talked about Shaddai, meaning nipple. So uh, Shaddai, actually, when we looked it up, it said dad. And that's funny because we call our fathers, we call them dad because we don't want to call any man father on earth, only the he father in heaven. But it, it said dad. I don't know if you remember that. And um, But Shad, is, it means nipple, giving life. Who gives life on earth? Okay, guys, so if you want more information about that, this is the, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, put the, I'll put the video in my playlist, How to Get on the Ark. I knew that Ruach HaKadosh was she without any information. Nobody told me anything. The Lord, Yahushua, has had me here in Paris, France, in a bubble. I've been separated out. I've been protected from religion and, and, and religious people. <laughs> I've just been here and he's just been feeding me and teaching me um, in solitude, alone, by myself, very quiet for a long time. I had no exposure to any of the information. I didn't, I didn't know. I never even thought about whether the Holy Spirit was masculine or feminine. It never occurred to me. I just knew Ruach HaKadosh told me she. I knew it was she. And then... You know, when I started getting all the flack about it, then I went and did some research into it. And then I found, you know, all of this proof that supported what I was innately taught uh, naturally by the Holy Spirit. So, uh, guys, do with that as you will. Like I said, if you want to call the Holy Spirit, he, it doesn't offend me. It, like I said, it's the spiritual world is not like um, the physical world. It's uh, the Holy Father is not a man or woman. It doesn't work that way. So, you do you, right? But I just, um, I need to make that clear because that's important to understand the scriptures, especially Revelation 12, okay? All right, so 
let's start. Finally, after all of that, we can start the Bible countdown. I have a feeling that I've been talking a long time and I might only be able to do a few of these and have to continue next week. It might take me two or three videos to get through this, but it has to be done right. So I'd rather take my time than uh, to rush through. And also I have all of those backup videos that if you need more detail, you can look that up on my channel or my website. So let's start. The Bible countdown, it starts at 2017. And I put 2017 to 2019, as I explained before, we need a three year uh, flowing window. But in general, uh, Revelation 12, 5, and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. So we have Revelation 12, Revelation 11, Revelation 5, John 21 and Numbers 13. Um, the reason I know that this one right here, Revelation 12, I know that Revelation 12, 5 started in 20... Here, this is Revelation 12, and it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. I know that this happened in 2012, because that was when the sign happened the sign in the sky it happened in 2012 and I've already done videos about that where I explain in detail but that's how I know that this was 2012 and when you count down you just count in order 12 13 14 15 uh, 16 and again like I said you have to go this could be 12 to 13 so we could say 13 14 15 16 17 so that's why I said we have a window but in in roughly I know that this starts in 2017 because I know this started in 2012 and I talk about it in this video right here, Revelation 12, Hidden Timeline. And I go into depth and I explain how I know that the Revelation 12 sign happened in 2012. So that's in this video right here, Timeline for Revelation. So uh, that's how I know that this happened in 2017. Uh, this one I've already explained, Revelation 11, how I know that that happened. Um, in 2017 because I know uh, I got the message about the two witnesses from the receiving the two menorahs and and Trump um, President Trump declaring Jerusalem as the capital that's how I know that happened in 2017 Revelation 5 I know this from iPad goat message and I showed you that earlier and John 21, I didn't tell you how I know about John 21, but I was on the train and Yahushua gave me the message. Um, the night before I had a dream, Yahushua came to me and said, the opposite of feed my sheep is eat my sheep. And that's how I got, that's how I did the whole, you know, the few videos about cannibalism that I did at that time. And then the next day I was on the train and I was like, wow, why was he telling me about eating the sheep? So then I looked up the John 21 verse where he's talking about feed my sheep. And that's when I understood there was a timeline in there. And it was very, um, the reason I can see these timelines is because I have the holy letters. I know how to uh, read the letter lines. And so when I'm doing my new stream, it lines up with the Bible verses and I can see that in my life that this happened in this year that happened in that year and I can see that the same prophetic language is reflected in the Bible verses it's hard to explain I explain it in better detail in that playlist if you want more information but that's how I found out about the timeline in John 21 and then numbers I've already explained to you that was about the train okay so what I can what I see here is that Revelation 12 in general the whole the whole the whole the whole chapter of revelation 12 is spiritual so when they're talking about uh the man child and then the woman they're talking about the holy spirit and they're talking about us as far as the holy spirit in us so it's all about spiritual things everything that is being said is symbolic for a spiritual thing that's why i wrote here spiritual okay Revelation 11.3 is talking about the, the spiritual in the material world. So for example, 
And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. So it's talking about the spiritual world because we're witnesses and the sackcloth is symbolic of what our spirit is going to be doing, us as the sons of Yahushua. But it's talking about what we're doing in the material world. Does that make sense? This one right here with Revelation 12, it's only talking about the, the spiritual sim symbology of the situation. But this one is talking about what our spirits are physically doing in the world. Okay, so this has more of a perspective in the material world, but the spiritual in the material world. And this is just straight up spiritual. Okay, right here, Revelation 5, this um, chapter is talking about the heavenly realm. So not only spiritual, but a whole nother dimension. It's talking about the things that are going on in heaven. So if this is a movie, imagine this is, these are five different scenes. And every time you have a scene, you have a different camera and it's moving to a different place or a different perspective. Okay. So this, this one would be a whole different camera and a whole different dimension. Okay. This is about the man in the material. So this is talking about what our, not our spirit is doing in the world, but what our bodies are doing in the world. Okay, so this is the most clear description of what will be physically going on with us in out of all these chapters. And Numbers 13 is an archetypal prophecy about what is showing us what is happening and what's going to happen but it's through the archetypes in the story so every person that's in this uh, chapter is an archetype of someone living today or people living today and what happened to them in this story is going to happen again to us okay so these all are happening at the same time they're all telling the same story all right so let's let me show you this and it's just like if you need to use your your imagination it's just like i think uh, mark luke and john all three of those bibles they're talking about the, the crucifixion of christ so the gospels matthew mark and luke known as the synoptic gospels because they include many of the same stories often in the same sequence uh, matthew a former tax collector who was called jesus was called by jesus to be one of the 12 apostles and mark a follower of peter as an uh, apostolic man so they are they are matthew mark and luke are telling the same stories but they stand in contrast to jan uh, john Whose content, whose content is distinct. So we have these, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, are telling the same story about the crucifixion, and that's very important because that's how you establish uh, the truth. By two or three witnesses, let every word be established. That is a thing. It's a, like a spiritual and, and legal as well uh, here on earth thing. You need to have two or three witnesses to establish everything. So that's why you have those three books telling the same story. And it's the same here. I know there's five, but um, these are prophetic. So it's not talking about something that has happened as proof. It's just um, talking about the things that will happen as well. So let's look. Let's look at this. Revelation 12:5. She brought forth the man-child. This is 2017. And so I want you guys to remember that we started coming together in what year? What year did we start to come together? 2017. Let me ask you a question. Did you feel completely crazy like you were the only one in the world that was like this and you thought that no one else, no one else could understand you or figure you out until when? When did you start to meet other people that you said, wow, I'm not alone? Was it 2017? <laughs> well, this is around the time when um, we started coming together. So her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So this is symbolic at meaning us coming into ourselves 
and being called, to being called out, to being called up, to being called to duty, to being called to start your training. That's what this is talking about. Um, Revelation 11.3, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. So I've talked in many videos about the five groups of the bridal army. And in the five groups of the bridal army, there is a group that I called the witnesses, okay? And that is a particular type of person, a particular type of gift, a particular type of job that has to be done. The same as a watchman, the same as a prophet, the same as a, a messenger or whatever, you know? Um, but in this Bible verse, this is not talking about the group as a spiritual gift of a witness. This is talking about um, true spiritual Israel. So it's talking about uh, Israel, the Hebrews that are by birth, natural born, and the Hebrews that are grafted into the tree that were Gentiles, but they are now true spiritual Israel because they're grafted into the tree. We're talking about all the five groups of the bridal army. We're talking about true spiritual Israel, everybody, all of us. The sons of Yahushua HaMashiach on earth, we are the two witnesses, the natural born and the grafted in. And I, I talked about that in another video. I don't feel like going back to YouTube and doing it, but I guess I have to, to be thorough. Right here in this video, 20 out of 23, Yahushua's holy numbers, shapes, and symbols. This is where I explain that we are the two witnesses. All right, it's right here, right here. 2017, 2019, we are um, going to begin to prophesize and wear our sackcloth. And I've talked about that in more detail. That was just like a couple of videos ago. And I believe in your personal life, if you look back over the past year, last year, 2017 was when I got the message about four and a half years so um, December 6, 2017, that is when President Trump announced that Jerusalem would be the new capital of Israel. And so that was 17. And that's when I got the two menorahs and all of that. So that's right here. And so that's how I knew. And on that day, 2017, I heard four and a half years. So that means this year, on December 6th, that's when the three and a half years will begin. All right, um, now Revelation 5, and I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and loosen the seals thereof. Well, that's what's happening in heaven right now. That's what's happening in heaven right now. And when we're talking about the book, we're talking about us. We are the books, and I've explained that in many videos. And the, the seals, we've talked about that. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. So this is man in the material. So this is what we're physically doing on earth. What am I doing right now? All praise, honor, and glory to the Most High Father. But if you love Him, this is what you need to be doing right now. If you have the Holy Spirit clawing at you, telling you to do something, you need to do it. You need to be producing fruit right now. Okay, so that's what that's what's happening right now. We need to be feeding His sheep. Numbers 13, these are the names of the men which Moses sent out to spy the land. And Moses called Oshea the son of Nun, Jehoshua. So there are going to be, the, again, this is the archetypal prophecy. There are going to be a group of us that are going to be sent out to spy the land. Now, what I'm talking about is the prophecy of the Exodus happening, happening again, because it says that, you know, everything that has happened before, like in the uh, time of Noah, will happen again. And I have understood in the past that there will be another Exodus. 2019, the 400 years of slavery, the 400 years of the curse is over. 2019. After 2019, right here, there will be an exodus. There will be an exodus that will be starting. The Hebrews 
I'm talking about true spiritual Israel, will, there is an exodus. We will be leaving Babylon. There will be people that will be sent out in this time frame to spy the land. And we're talking about the land of milk and honey. That's why it's so important to understand where is the real Israel, where is the real Jerusalem, because if we're, um, if it's a major part of prophecy, we need to know the truth. So that's why we need to start asking real questions. Yeah. So again, this is prophetic, uh, but if I, if I understand well what the Holy Spirit has taught me, then in this time frame between now and 2019, there will be people that will be going out to spy the land. All right. And that can be on many levels that can be physically getting on an airplane and going somewhere, or it could be also at home on the computer, figuring it out, you know, but this is where we are with it. So what I'm telling you is all of these things are describing what's going on in our spirits and in our bodies on earth, in heaven, prophetically and symbolically. It's all telling the same story, and it's all about us. <laughs> um, I have the feeling that this will be the last one that I'll be able to do for this for this video because it's getting really long. But this goes all the way to 2033. So the next couple of videos will be about this, and I hope you have the patience to hear me out. I know it's long. I know it's hard. It's long and hard for me, too. The Bible Countdown. All right, so Revelation 12, 6. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. So this is the spiritual, what's happening in our spiritual. And this is for three and a half years. So this is what's happening to us right now in 2018. And let me tell you, what are you doing right now? At this very moment, what are you doing? Oh, you're eating spiritual. You're eating spiritual food. You're being fed spiritually. Um, do you do you feel safe? Do you feel like you're protected? Like, you know, many things can go on in the world. You know, California can burn, and and uh, all these different things can happen. But you feel um, you feel safe and protected. Like he's going to take care of you. Yeah, well, this is this is where you are. You're somewhere and you will not be harmed. You will be fed for the next three and a half years. So we're talking like in the summer 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. So we're talking about in the summer of 2021, if I'm not mistaken. And that's right in time for the Prince of Persia for his fa his mask to fall. So that's what we're doing right now. We're preparing for um, the things that are to come. That's why we're being fed. That's why the truth is coming out. That's why all the secrets are being un unveiled. That's why there will be nothing um, done in darkness that will not be brought to light because we, um, we need to know the truth. And that's what's happening right now. Revelation 11, 4. So I'm just going in order. If you don't understand, all I need is I found the first verse and I knew what year that was. And then I just count it down. You know, I just go down the list like this. And I talk about that in other videos if you don't understand how it works. So this one, um, Revelation 11, there are two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Okay. Can you see that that's telling the same story? This is about... Um, our spiritual situation in the material world and this is talking just about the spiritual but it's still the same thing we are uh, coming together we are learning who we are we are starting to we're, we're called we know that we're called we know that we're chosen we're, we're um, feeding others spiritual food we're being fed spiritual food and we're, we're appearing and we're starting to get bolder and we're saying okay we are sons of Yahushua HaMashiach. We are true spiritual Israel. Um, we are here. We are here. And when adversity comes and, and different things come, we will, be able, we will be standing up in this time. And we will be here. 
we're here. You're not alone anymore. You're, 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 you're not crazy. We're here. Revelation 12, 5, uh, Revelation 5, 3, and no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look there, thereupon. So this is what's happening in heaven. And again, um, we are the, the books. John 21, he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, loveth thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Loveth thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Now this is again what we'll be doing in the material world in this time frame. So it's very important that if you love Yahushua HaMashiach, if you are one of the olive trees or the candlestick, if you are, if you are uh, the woman in the wilderness, meaning someone who um, having the Holy Spirit Ruach HaKadosh inside of you then you will be feeding his sheep at this time and you you need to figure out what that is but Yahushua will show you and he will tell you Ruach HaKadosh will tell you and show you what that is and you just need to be obedient right um, and Numbers 13 17 and Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them get you up this way southward and go up into the mountain so again this is uh, archetypal prophecy this will be happening there will be some of us there will be a group of us that will be going up or going out and and looking at the the land where we will be um, going to there will be it might not be me it might not be you it might be our children it might be um, other people that will actually be having the exodus out of America or out of your whatever country you are in. But there will be an exodus of um, true spiritual Israel back to the true Jerusalem, wherever that is. And we will discuss that later. And the people, there will be a group of us right now going out and finding that place and... Um, that that's going to be happening at the in this time frame. Okay, so 2019 to 2021. So I would like to do this last one, but I'm not sure about the time. I have a feeling it might be I might be going over time. So I know this is might not be the most fun and entertaining video in the world. I'm sorry, but it is um, important for you to know the time. And if you are someone that's very stressed about it. Um, then this, I'm sure, is, is very helpful to know what's going on. It's all written. It's all written. It's all written. Um, that does not mean that you can go around and, and just slack off and say, well, Yahushua is not going to come back until, I don't know, I, I, it does not say when Yahushua is going to come back and, and this is what I'm doing here. Um, no one knows when Yahushua is going to come back and anyone who says that they know when Yahushua is going to come back, they should repent because no one knows the day or the time that Yahushua will be, will be coming back and that's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm doing is just showing you what has already been written, okay? So I pray that it's been a blessing to you. I will continue next week here with uh, 2019 and 2021. And until then, saints, be blessed. I, pr I pray that this is in Holy Yahushua HaMashiach's name for the Most High Father's uh, glory and for His honor. And I love you very much. And I will talk to you again soon next week. And we will continue with the Bible countdown. Shalom.